Hi, um, I want to thank the organizer to uh, give me the opportunity to present my first results here. Uh, I am Lizzie Schaltus and I am from Strasbourg and I will talk about modeling uh, material culture from artifacts. So, um, my PhD aims to model groups for which uh, similar material culture can be identified in Eastern Gaul between the 3rd century BC and the 4th century AD through the study of small finds. It is about uh, using artifacts to determine recurrent typological assemblage and to observe the distribution of the density of these assemblages to determine these groups. The objectives are also to take into account large quantities of objects types of, and types of objects and not only one type of objects or just a few hundred of uh, objects. So, um, this method, method relies on classical approach in archaeology, which is to determine cultural groups based on artifacts and their geographical distribution. However, this study adopts a new prism by modeling the data and developing statistical analysis tools to process large quantities of variables. So, the, first of all, I place on top of each other distribution maps for all types of artifacts considered. So this is, uh, I'll do this one. So this is the first, uh, yeah. Um, then I calculate the density of each type and subtypes over the study area. The result of this calculation is sampled on regular uh, intervals. For each sample, I create a typological profile, which is a type uh, of distribution graph like a barcode showing the typological distribution in the area. After, I create a density matrix based on this profile, which uh, for each profile created just before, I calculate the typological density, which gave, gives me a different value for every one of them. Then I can calculate the typological density distances between each cell of the matrix using values obtained for each sample with the last step. This calculation allows me to create distance diagrams to observe on a given axis the differences in typological density between the cell and controls. I can also use a hierarchical dendrogram to group the cells of the matrix by similarity. Finally, the groups created using clustering methods, methods are projected on a map uh, to observe the distribution of the links between the cells. So, uh, the, the typological profiles are the main element of this method because they are the starting point uh, for fastest comparison and their grouping. As I already said, it's, kind, it's a kind of a barcode uh, or a fingerprint uh, illustrating the typological composition of a site or a region. Its main advantage is that it takes into account all objects for which a type is known, even if there is no specific context. The only necessary information is the typology and the localization of the object. Moreover, the quantity of objects of the same type in the same place is also taken into account, and not just the presence or absence uh, as in traditional distribution maps. This means that the representativeness of the type within the material group studied is taken into consider consideration. So this is, the, this is it. They all also smooth the degree of typological accuracy because the typological information is an indicated as a parent-child uh, type code with the object type as a parent and the subtypes as children. So the typological profiles are created in order to, that the children, which are the subtypes, um, are added together in the quantity of parents, which are the types. So this is what you can see uh, on the slide here, with three subtypes added in the type, and just the plus uh, at the top is uh, the, just the type information. This method, therefore, takes into account all artifacts considered as cultural markers with no limitation regarding discovery context. Thus, the cultural groups defined are differentiated by characteristic typological assemblage. 
the presence or absence of a certain type is no longer a determining factor. Uh, so the data come mostly from online databases such as the WebGIS Archaeologist or uh, the small fine inventory website artifacts. They also come from artifact studies and site inventories and from academic works literature. Uh, they are stored in a relational uh, databases which is composed of a table containing the artifacts the provenance and the bibliographic information linked by a unique ID to the tables containing the typology and the site information. From a practical point of view, uh, this modeling is created on the open source software R uh, for its ability to treat an extensive data set efficiently as well as its flexible framework. In addition, it allows you to automate tasks to repeat operations by simply changing the data sets and thus creating the number of analysis, uh, increasing the number of analysis and tests. So I will now quickly introduce you to the manipulation performed on the data under R before presenting you with the first results. The first step is to divide the data into 18 data frames, which correspond to 18 chronolog chronological periods taken into account in the study. Each data frame contains the data belonging to the designated period. The second step is to take the samples and calculate the typological density for each of them. At first, the data has to be specialized and ex its extent to be determined as a study area. Then, this area can be divided into a grid of about 100 cells. After the typological profile of each cell is extracted, and uh, the kernel density can be calculated. This sample is therefore based on the type distribution within each cell on the map, and corresponds to the confidence interval of the distribution. These different operations are stored in R within a function in order to be able to perform them all, all at once over all 18 periods, creating 18 times about 100 samples corresponding to the, the cells created for the study area. Uh, one of the first tests that can be done on this data are the distance diagram. It's a method that aims to determine boundaries by observing when there is a change in typological density. It relies on interaction models that map interaction parameters based on a given distance that can be geographical, uh, economic, or based on material culture. It is based on the first law of geography stated by Tobler in uh, 1970. Everything is related to, to everything else, but near things are more related than distant things. From a technical point of view, this method works like the pre previous one, with the creation of the samples and the calculation of the kernel density. Then each point is compared to each other, and the result is projected on a diagram. So this is a, uh, a distance diagram. So on, uh, on this graph, the y-axis shows the, the typological density calculated for each sample, and the abscissa axis shows the distance. Here, I take into account all the cells of the grid, but I could also very well uh, decide to observe only the cell on a single uh, east-west or north-south axis, for example. Thus, the points on the same line uh, have the same typological density, and therefore they have the same typological assemblage and belong to the same material culture. So another step is the clustering. So to create the clusters, the data first need to be divided <coughs> using the k-means methods, which is a, classif a classic classification tool that allows us to divide data, uh, data set into k-homogeneous classes. This, uh, the problem is to determine the ideal number of k-groups. For this purpose, R offers the PAM function that uses several methods to test the data and the optimal number of groups. Finally, the result of the data division into k groups can be <coughs> displayed on a map. So, uh, the result I will now present to you come from a questioning on the use of typology in this study. Indeed, the typological profiles come di directly from the artifacts typologies, and they are thus the main tool to highlight 
to highlight material culture. The, the ID was therefore to perform the analysis for different types of fibulas and observe if there are any differences between the typologies used. <coughs> so the data, uh, the database base therefore contains 4,555 fibulas distributed over 217 sites and 18 chronological periods. These periods correspond to a uh, half century and a quarter of a century at the turn of the first century AC. These fibulas are defined by 132 types and subtypes for the Gaspar typology, 264 for the Ria typology, 142 for the Feuger typology, and 118 for the Strip typology. This distribution into types and subtypes is based on the typological alignment of the four typologies studied here. This alignment is based on the equivalences between the types given in each and in each respective typology, and in particular in Gaspar, which is the most recent one. <coughs> when equivalence was not clearly established and an illustration of the artifact was available, I created the alignment myself. If this was not possible, I assigned the unique ID zero to indicate that there is no equivalence with this typology. So the distance graph obtained. You can see here that uh, the distance graph for every cell of the map of the four typologies considered in the same period, which is one, uh, 100 to uh, 75 BC. We see immediately, immediately that the results are different. As I said before, the points on the same line have the same typological density, and therefore we can argue that they belong to the same material culture. These disparities seem obvious since the typologies are not carried out uh, according to the same questions or for the same graphic, geographical areas. First of all, two of them were established in relation to the fibulas found at a particular site in the study area. Secondly, they do not have the same degree of typological precision. The best example is shown with the strip typology, with, which is uh, uh, in the bottom, uh, which defines a large amount of subtype for a single type, which is the Noir fibula. So the results on the map. So this is the type of map obtained by this method. Only the results obtained for the period from uh, 150 to 100 BC are presented here. Uh, the distribution of the groups obtained is indeed different, or even radically different, for the four typologies tested. There isn't the same number of clusters, and their distribution is different. S okay. <laughs> Some typologies have missing data due to the lack of typological alignment. The method, so the method I have just presented to you therefore allows me to highlight different typological profiles in the study area. Moreover, these profiles are indeed different according to the typology used to create them. In the same way, typo typological profiles generate different clusters ac according to the typology. The results displayed here come only from a sample of my databases. I now have to produce the analysis of all the artifact studies, which currently represent about uh, 20,000 objects. It will then be really possible to observe whether these methods based on artifacts and their typology makes it possible to highlight re regional groups of material culture. It will also be possible to observe whether certain types of artifacts have more influence than others in determining these groups. The multiplication of these operations is all the more possible since the script created to present these results now allows the automatization of the method. In addition, this modeling also led me to reflect on other issues, such as the use of models that have long been established in archaeology as typology and chronology. To conclude, I would like to do some publicity. <laughs> Just a quick word about archaeologists. It's, uh, it is an online uh, platform run by the University of Strasbourg, which uh, enables to pull and query databases from different sources. Several tens of thousands of sites, objects, and analy analyses are already available. 
Every author submitting his localized data into archaeologists keeps control of them and is the only one who can amend them. Any user can easily access to other contribution, contributors' data and improve its own databases. A directory allows the researchers to contact each other. This initiative helps to develop scientific exchanges between countries and institutions. So if you are interested, just check the website and join the community. Plus, we are planning to organize a summer school about R and open data. So on second, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you for listening.